Tom Hopper. Luther Hargreaves was one of the loyal children who stayed with Sir Reginald Hargreaves after the group split. His talents and powers made him a de facto leader at times, but the team didn't always agree with that, did they? Tom Hopper plays Luther like a big teddy bear. Yes, we're alluding to the fact Luther has ape DNA spliced into him that mixes well with his protective persona. This devotion is shaken throughout the show, but his demeanor may resemble some other characters Hopper's played. You probably recognize him from Black Sails. Hopper plays notorious pirate Billy Bones on the Prelude story to Treasure Island. Even with a darker future, Hopper chose to play him softer for the show. He seems fixed on big, imposing characters with kind underbellies. Well, then again, his quick role in Game of Thrones begs to differ. Yeah, you probably forgot that he's Sam Tarly's brother, Dickon, in Season 7 of the show. This Tarly is nothing like his brother Sam. He's even tempered, brave, and rude. We never see this Hopper character show much of a polite side. Just two of the many Hopper characters over the years that led to Luther. Aidan Gallagher, number five. We recognize that being a child actor in the entertainment industry isn't easy. This video isn't all about those historical misdeeds, but we can't avoid them. Luckily, Aidan Gallagher seems to have avoided the worst of the industry and found a supportive cast that fosters his talent. However, you're probably wondering how someone who started Umbrella Academy at the age of 14 could be known for anything else. Just you wait and see. Gallagher got his first role as a minor character in Modern Family. He was only 10 years old at the time, and he wasn't in many episodes. Still, landing your first role on a major cable television show is nothing to scoff at. Plus, talent scouts did take notice. He quickly managed to get a co-lead role in Nickelodeon's Nicky, Ricky, Dicky, and Dawn as Nicky Harper. He even received two nominations in 2016 and 2017 for his role on that show. It feels like the sky is the limit for this budding actor. So good luck stopping me. And that's not even mentioning his role as number five on Umbrella Academy. He's literally playing a 60-year-old man in a 13-year-old's body. The kind of complexity it requires deserves some recognition. You'll be seeing this face around. Jordan Claire Robbins, Grace. My name is Grace. I'm your new nanny. Grace is one of the more complex characters in the Hargreaves family. She's not one of the 43 children born on that supernatural day. Instead, she's seen as the mother figure to the Umbrella Academy children and a caretaker to Sir Reginald. It's this weird structure where she's never entirely a part of the family group. Still, her full disclusion would have led to darker events. It's like she has to scratch and claw to be included. We would say maybe someday, but that's not gonna happen. It's Jordan Claire Robbins behind the role that makes everything work. Robbins' previous parts don't really match up to Claire's personality, but she's definitely ridden the line between evil and redeemable. Her character Anita in 12 Monkeys is the closest we can find to Claire in Umbrella Academy. Yeah, that's where a few of you know her from. That's just one part, but you probably know her for a larger role. Well, a more evil role. She played Jamie Plum, a wild witch in Supernatural. Yeah, you just had a real oh moment there, didn't you? David Castaneda, Diego. Admit it, there's a part of you that admires Diego Hargreaves and his role in the team. David Castaneda takes that role and pushes it to new heights. He could be the archetype jealous second fiddle, but he does something new with this spot. Instead, Diego acts out with such bravado and brashness that we see it as something more. His connection with grace and emotional attachments make him more than just a trope. And all that comes down to Castaneda's acting skills. He didn't just form him out of the blue. Some of you might remember him from a minor role in End of Watch. Maybe it's his three-episode arc as Nicholas and Jane the Virgin that sparked familiarity. Everyone out! Turns out he's actually got quite a few credits to his name already. However, one role stands out, and we bet it's where you know him from. Castaneda played Hector in Sicario Day of the Soldado in 2018. Sure, it was one year after Umbrella Academy started production, but he shot this film back in 2016, which means he was likely on that project before stepping on set for Umbrella Academy. Just goes to show that things were looking up for him. Adam Godley, Pogo. So good to see you. Man, how are we gonna do this one? After all, Pogo's a chimp. It's not like he's acted in many other shows. Wait, what's that? Pogo isn't real? Oh, uh, well, this is embarrassing. Just forget we said anything. Turns out he's played by the impeccable Adam Godley, a veteran stage actor and longtime character actor. You probably don't recognize him under all that CGI, though. We sure didn't. I'm an idiot. But we're forgetting about that and moving on. 
If you're lucky enough, you recognize Godley from his Oliver-nominated roles in many brilliant theater productions. Otherwise, you might have noticed him in a few favorite television shows. For instance, he had a recurring role on Suits for five episodes as Nigel Alexander Nesbitt. He even showed up in Breaking Bad as Elliot Schwartz and in Mad Men as Wayne Kirkaby. Still, he's most well known for one role in particular that you've definitely figured out by now. He was, in fact, Mr. TV in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. The stone-faced, disconcerted, and outright no-nonsense dad to Mike TV. So, that's where Pogo gets it from. Robert Sheehan, Klaus Robert Sheehan is a master of his type. That charismatic, slightly darkened exterior with a tinge of trouble is right up his alley. His playing Klaus Hargreaves seems like second nature after you hear about all his other shows. We're talking about a master of television, though you probably already knew that since his character in Umbrella Academy is so complicated. His flawed personality is understandable given his powers. I see dead people. Sheehan began his career as a child actor on the stage. He even played Oliver Twist, but we want to focus on more recent performances. Sheehan has done some film work, including the 2018 film Mortal Engines. Which is an odd coincidence, since he also starred in Mortal Instruments City of Bones. They are not a part of the same franchise, but certainly seem like it. The fact Robert Sheehan is in both is just happenstance. Trust us, we looked into it. While those film roles are nice accomplishments, we weren't joking when we called him a master of television. More specifically, Sheehan seems to excel in more indie-like TV. He was Darren in Love Hate and Nathan Young in Misfits. Both performances received IFTA nominations, which is saying something. Comfior, Sir Reginald. Ah, the monocle. Probably every viewer's least favorite character given his cold composure and tendency to emotionally abuse every member of the Umbrella Academy. Even then, moments of redemption can be found throughout the series. He shows concern for Luther when he speaks to Klaus from the afterlife. Uh, that's something, right? Look, he's never going to win Father of the Year. Well, behind that monocle and mustache is the actor Colm Fior, whose work as a side character would astound you. Fior has been in the industry for a long time. He's been both major and minor characters in all sorts of films. In other words, it's hard to nail him down to one type of character. His roles have changed over time. One you might remember him from is his work as Martin Harrison in the film version of Chicago. Eh, don't worry, it wasn't a major singing role, but we're confident that he's got pipes. Yes, Fior has a face that feels hard to forget, but we bet you had no idea he was in Thor. Can you guess his role? Yeah, he was the frost giant that's eventually tricked into a trap by Loki. Bet you didn't see that coming. Ellen Page, Vanya. Raise your hand if you or someone you know has been personally inspired by Ellen Page. Uh, let's see, that, uh, oh, that's everybody. Well then, it's safe to say she's a one-of-a-kind actress. We can all agree that her performance as Vanya Hargreaves in Umbrella Academy is a master class. The arc she goes through is at the core of the series. Heck, without Page in that role, some fans wouldn't have even given the show a try and discovered its excellence. She is top billing for this cast. Let's address the apparent film here. You likely remember Ellen Page from Juno. It was a breakout performance for her that launched a string of movies with her as a lead role. We even forget she's been a superhero before in the X-Men films, but it was her snappy dialogue and quick wit comedy in Juno that endeared her to viewers. Well, that combined with a vast emotional range. Sometimes, though, we don't remember all the popular films she's in. Like, you put on Inception and completely forget that she's in it till you see her. It's not because she's terrible, it's the exact opposite. She blends so well into her roles that we forget it's her. Cameron Britton, Hazel. This former preschool teacher turned actor is on the path towards greatness by landing the role of Hazel in Umbrella Academy. His villainous intentions combined with his light-hearted sweet tooth make Hazel the oddest mix of sweet and sour. We're not saying we're rooting for Hazel and Cha-Cha, but we're also not fully rooting against them. His role in Mindhunter completely flips the book. He's shockingly creepy and unsettling as Ed Kemper in Mindhunter. He plays the part well and leaves us feeling like we're face to face with the real criminal. As of right now, his success as Kemper seems to be giving him chances to be the villain more and more often. You wouldn't think Britain would enjoy these parts, but he keeps nailing them. Again, we want to emphasize that Britain taught special needs students from 18 months old to 3 years old for 8 years before acting. It's obvious he's a wonderful person in real life, but he just seems destined to play these darker roles. Like his spot as Plague in The Girl in the Spider's Web. Here, he's a good guy, but those films are notorious for their anti-hero characters. He's never full-on good. Justin H. Min, 
Ben. Ben only occasionally shows up in the show whenever Klaus is sober. Still, his character hangs over the entire Umbrella Academy. We know that his incident is partly why the group disbanded, but it's never apparent what happened. With that in mind, it's interesting that Ben is played by Justin H. Min. Min is an adult, which implies that the team was older when it happened. Min plays a down-to-earth and caring character well. His performance only adds to the mystery surrounding Ben. Oddly enough, Ben doesn't have a lot of credits to his name before Umbrella Academy. One could even argue that it's his breakout role. He was a minor character in Pure Genius before CBS canceled it. Thank goodness they did, or he might not have auditioned for Umbrella Academy. Things always seem to work out in the end. Emmy Raver Lampman, Allison. Emmy Raver Lampman is yet another character on the rise. In fact, we heard a rumor that she's about to get some serious starring roles here soon. Did it work? Ah, shoot. Oh, well, just further proof that we don't have any superhuman powers like her Umbrella Academy character. The rumor, as she is called in the show, has the power to distort all of reality. But now I know nothing in my life was real. It's such an original idea, and Raver Lampman handles the character well. So what do you know her from? Well, she's more of a stage performer, actually. She was in a few episodes of Jane the Virgin as Lily Lofton, so that's something. She's even lent her voice talent to shows like American Dad and Robot Chicken. Heck, that doesn't prove she's got range, then what does? However, we're confident you know her from one Broadway musical guaranteed. Yeah, Raver Lampman is a part of the original cast of Hamilton. She even moved into the role of Angelica Schuyler for a time. Okay, so maybe you didn't get that chance to see Hamilton live and therefore wouldn't recognize her from that. It's okay though, because she's set to appear in the 2021 film as part of the cast. John Magaro, Leonard Peabody. Usually when Leonard comes on screen, we tend to look away. He's so unsettling, it's hard to see his character act so ruthlessly and punish so many people. Of course, we know his real name is Harold Jenkins and that Cha-Cha is supposed to protect him to ensure the apocalypse. That doesn't mean we want to get to know him. His rough past and tendency to rush into revenge or violence makes him pure evil in our minds. Still, the character is performed well by John Magaro, a seasoned actor that shouts, where do I know him from? Well, that's precisely why you're here, so let's get on with it. If you're a big fan of Netflix originals, then you might remember his role as Vince in Orange is the New Black. He gets married to Lorna in the series, and the two have quite a dramatic long-term relationship. Probably more memorable than that part is two of his film roles. He appeared as Danny and Carol, where he tries to start a relationship with Teresa before she gets involved with Carol. He's best known, though, for his performance in The Big Short as Charlie Geller, his most reserved role of these four. Sheila McCarthy, Agnes. Agnes probably didn't know what she was getting into when she got romantically involved with Hazel. Seriously, she went from a humble waitress at Gritty's Donuts to a critical element in stopping the apocalypse. During all of this, Agnes keeps calm and is extremely understanding of Hazel's complicated life. She's certainly getting a better life in the series compared to her role in the comics. Part of the reason they reworked her part is because of the brilliant Sheila McCarthy. McCarthy is a big-time veteran of the television industry. She's been acting in shows since 1982. It's hard to find just a few things you might know her from, but we'll try our best. One recent performance was as Judith in The Day After Tomorrow. It's a minor character, but she definitely stands out from the backdrop. There's one role without a doubt a large portion of fans recall her from over the years. McCarthy appeared as Samantha, the TV reporter in Die Hard 2. She's not on screen for a lot of time, but she's definitely memorable. If there's any moment that you remember her face from, it's definitely this one. She went from playing a television reporter to a villain's key love interest. Mary J. Blige, Coco. Are we ending with another obvious reference? By this point, Mary J. Blige is undoubtedly cemented in the halls of pop culture as a singer. She's been a crucial part of many famous movie soundtracks. However, her role as Cha-Cha in Umbrella Academy is only a hint of the recent role she's gotten as an actor. It's been snowballing into bigger and bigger parts for a few years now. It all started as a few cameos where she played herself, but now it's something bigger. So yeah, you probably see Cha-Cha and immediately say, that's Mary J. Blige! However, some of the less music-inclined might know her from a few acting roles in recent years. For instance, she played a feature role in Rock of Ages. Obviously, she was partially chosen for her incredible vocal talent, but she also showed she's got acting chops. Even more recently, Blige proved she should be taken seriously as an actor when she took the role of Florence Jackson in Mudbound. Playing Jackson might as well have been a rocket to the moon because it launched her into a whole other stratosphere. 
Cha-Cha is only another step forward. Well, that's a lot of roles for such a short time. Who's your favorite actor in Umbrella Academy? Tell us in the comments down below.